So last time I showed how things were going with this project, I had these big uh, blocky texting devices, and um, you know they work they work pretty well, but you're not going to fit this into your pocket. Um, I was getting I, I barely did any testing of how far they could go, but I was I was easily getting over a mile of range, and so that's from one to another, and when, when you add in meshing that's going to happen, um, you know, that's not a one mile range, uh, that could be a lot higher. I also have these tuned not, not to long range with the uh, LoRa settings. To recap, what I'm, what I'm building is some sort of devices that will let you be able to communicate if you're in an area that has no cell coverage or uh, you know, maybe you just don't want to use the cell coverage uh, and, and no internet, um, it, and also securely. So these are sending signals out through the air, um, but there is very strong encryption happening uh, in such a way that if you this device wants to send a message to this device, uh, nothing else is going to be able to read it. Um, so, so I've been working on that um, and and that most of that works just fine so since then what I've really been focusing on is um, making some hardware choices that will let me shrink this down um, and, and also make it cheaper to cheaper and easier to build to um, help with that that's I made this little test rig thingy uh, so all the different components that are part of it or that might be part of it I've got them on here I can just pull them off and put them back on try different things, try different screens the different uh, development boards I've been testing with I'll have a place that I can uh, plug those on you know and uh, put, put my code on it see how it works um, and, and really that's been helping me figure out what I can get rid of and which devices might be a good good option. Um, for now I have uh, decided to uh, get things up and running with a prototype on one or both of the, these, the IoT uh, and the Arduino Maker Zero. They, they both have different uh, pluses there are definitely some other ones that could be a good choice, um, and I just don't. I really would like to get get running with this Spark Fun one that has the chip on the other side, but I kind of have to <laughs> get get a, a smaller prototype up and running first. So maybe I'll come back to that. I have had it at various times running on all these different uh, devices, except for the. I'd really like to run it on this Seed Studio thing, but it just doesn't have enough pins. So I have been cutting out hardware. I don't have blue. Don't I mean this does have Bluetooth on it? This device doesn't. Uh, most of these development boards don't have Bluetooth. But I had been uh, doing the onboarding process when you factory reset a device and you start a new cluster with it. Um, it can onboard other cluster other devices, and it was doing that through Bluetooth. But I, I kind of got to thinking, why am I, you know, I've got this radio transmitter and I'm already using it, and I've got a really secure, uh, high-level protocol built on top of this. So what? Why would I be using Bluetooth? I'll just use this. So uh, I got got that working yesterday. The onboarding. Um, so most of the time, other than doing the testing and figuring out what I can cut out. Uh, I have been working on the UI, and I'll be able to show that here in a second. In the interest of getting rid of things um, to make it smaller, I've gotten rid of this rotary control. Because um, really, if I've got a touch screen and, and I've got it working well, then th there's no reason why I need this control. So actually, I'm going to move the camera so that, and I'm going to restart that again so that so that you get a good chance to see it. Okay, I think this will let you see better. Uh, so I just gave it power. Uh, this screen should be coming on here in a minute. And this one is running on the Nano 
which has uh, the onboard Wi-Fi. Uh, so that another thing I have changed is adding Wi-Fi. So it definitely it still runs uh, the LoRa. You can see if I can find something to point with. Uh, this is listening at 915 megahertz. Um, the S means it's configured for standard distance. And the plus means it's uh, putting out high power from the battery. Um, and then, so you can also see I'm connected to a Wi-Fi network. So, it, and that's the Wi-Fi uh, wi network I have at my house. If this thing onboards another device, um, it's automatically going to be given the SSID and, and password so that the person doesn't have to enter, enter that. Um, so this thing can send a, through two channels, through LoRa or through Wi-Fi. In, on Wi-Fi, there's no servers or anything. It uses uh, UDP multicast, so it's basically bouncing the message off your router to any anything else that happens to be listening. Of course, it's encrypted and everything. Um, you can see where I've sent some test messages. Um, I've got the colors I'll make that where where you can kind of customize the color scheme it does have a, a touch keyboard and I'm still improving that if I want to send a message just like I've been doing here I will touch cast and then it's telling me I'm about to do a secure broadcast so I can just type something and there you can see it going out this one happens to be going out through the UDP not through Laura but one is kind of a backup to the other and you decide if you're going to have Wi-Fi then you you decide which one has the priority and um, it'll try one if that doesn't work it'll back up to the other and I'm going to be adding a whole bunch of other capabilities beyond that there is these are the old messages so you can kind of scroll that's what these triangles are you can also uh, here's the menu so the the other button down there that was menu I just hit it so you can do different things if I want to clear all my messages if I want to onboard another device or switch clusters uh, delete my message history uh, the keyboard I can make it landscape if, if I want to have a bigger area to work with I can make it not not save history you also can uh, reply if I were to get a message from someone I can just touch it and it would reply since that was a broadcast that would be replying with a broadcast but if, if it was a direct message when I touch it it's going to want to reply with a direct message so yeah there's a little dot there telling you that it's not frozen so as long as that dot is changing colors it's still running so I'm going to work on uh, other UI features uh, everything is encrypted on the frame like I mentioned in a previous video and you can I don't have a password you'll see when I turned that on it just came right on well you can set a uh, password on the device and then everything is encrypted with it with your password I mean it, it is all encrypted but it's encrypted with not your password right now but if you enter a password um, everything on the fram you know even the frequency it's listening at all of the clusters and and everything that you're a part of um, that's all encrypted so um, yeah, so I've got a lot of work to do. I'm going to be building a small prototype, playing with some batteries, uh, seeing how small I can get it with just basic, you know, not mass manufacturing, but with tools that, that anyone has. I'll probably make a custom uh, PCB that has instructions like put this part here, put this part here. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's where this is.